Valma, episode 7, the one where she has a baby. She kidnaps it, it's not hers. I don't think she could find a man with low enough standards. Normally, if every hole's a goal, then Valma's more like a gateway to hell. It must be defended at all costs to stop anything coming out of it. Now, we start in hospital with Valma talking to her mom, except her mom has forgotten everything that's happened. Very coincidental, considering she was found at the crime scene. You don't remember who took you and the hot girls because you have amnesia? The thing I really enjoy about Valma is its contrived plot, where you absolutely can't see the twist coming a mile away. We found this person at the crime scene. Should we even briefly consider if she's the criminal? No. That would give the game away too early, and besides, she doesn't look anything like Fred. That what the doctor said? Amnesia joke, which I can make because I have it. No, no, you don't need to be something in order to make a joke about it. That's ridiculous. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to call this show retard- 90 seconds into the show, including the recap. We get this. Hey, no offense, but just being a white guy with a clipboard doesn't cut it anymore. No offense, but I'm going to be a massive bigot to you. I'm sorry, Mindy, I mean Valma, but if I did need advice on how to create a show so bad it could bankrupt national television stations, then I'd consult you. But until that point, maybe we should listen to the guy with a clipboard. But despite the fact that Valma's just crapped all over him, the doctor leaves, and we all start listening to the guy who apparently shouldn't be allowed to say anything. Personally, I think he should just hold her to do it and give another clipboard, preferably at high velocity. Instead, no, no, he's just going to be a random punching bag that everyone insults who then proceeds to help them. Seems very unrealistic to me. After that, they're gone forever. Gone, gone forever? forever? Gone forever? Oh, sorry. Oh, careful. Almost went 30 seconds without humiliating Fred. I'm glad they slipped that one in at the last second. But her mom's memories may return if she's kept happy for the next 72 hours, and Valma decides to do that, she's just got to lie to her. Most people would have chosen to live a good, positive, moral life in the intervening years so you could just be yourself, but with Velma, let's face it, it's probably better to lie. That's a lot of lying, but thankfully I'm damn good at it. <laughs> Convincing everyone that you're not a demon from the nether realm has got to be challenging. <laughs> but of course the mom ditched the family because Valma's so insufferable. We already learned that in episode 2. And so now, we have to hide the fact that the father's got with somebody else? The mom voluntarily left the marriage, but for some reason, we've got to pretend about the dad. I honestly don't know why unless it's just another excuse to humiliate him again. Velma gets the gang together and starts changing the house back into how it was two years ago, which seems like destroy it. Yeah, Velma's mom isn't just a horrible person that ditched the family and started cutting out people's brains. She was a horrible mother as well. We need to turn this spotless and well-loved dream home back into the normal person dump she remembers. Yeah, the mother kept the house like a pigsty. See, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Now, for some reason, the father's vastly improved younger model is going along with all of this, and she just takes comfort in her pillows. To keep me sane during all of this, breathe, keep calm, and carry wine. Who on earth is this x-ray girl? You're not an alcoholic, you're a mom. Okay, not quite x-ray girl, but it's close. So Velma goes around the house turning into the dank hole it used to be by taking away all these happy family photos and replacing them with the miserable ones that existed two years ago, starts smashing furniture, taking the nice, new, well-looked-after furniture that they have and wrecking it. Although every cloud has a silver lining, and so I present to you the most entertaining part of the show. Child proofing. <laughs> Get wrecked. Let's be honest, that's so good we should see it twice. <laughs> I'm not sure that'll ever get old. And of course, to truly make the house as her mother did, we've got to spill whiskey all over the floor. You have to put your back into it if we're gonna make this place smell like my mom. Honestly, I can see why the dad was happy she left. At this point, my only question is, having seen how disgusting and repulsive the mother was, why did he decide to breed with it? You must have known that Valma was gonna be the only outcome of that. Some people make deals with Crossroad Demons to have a kid. Her father makes them in the hope that Valma will go away. <laughs> now the brains from the last episode are having a welcome back party and Velma's got an unusual plan. We could dramatically upstage them by going as a couple. How are you going to upstage kidnapped brains in jars? by going as a couple of women. You're not unusual, special, or rare. In fact, this is college. If anything, it's the norm. You couldn't be less inconspicuous if you went to a sushi restaurant. Oh, what's that? I didn't know Haddock was on the menu today. It isn't. You just relax and heavily medicated trophy wife it. You're calling Velma a trophy wife. Why, because she got hit in the face with one? <laughs> I don't even understand. Normally, trophy wives are supposed to be the prize. The prize for Velma is getting away from her. But her mom comes home, gets given glasses, and magically remembers something. Oh, I remember going to the manor, which we already knew about as part of the story, so why are we getting told it again? I don't know. It's like we've been removing 10 IQ points for every episode of this show. Probably from just the brain damage you get watching it, to be honest. It might not be the worst assumption, but it's a sign her memory's coming back. She even remembers the present that Velma's been not opening for absolutely no reason over 
the last seven episodes. That's the present you forced me to buy you because you ruined Christmas. Yeah, that sounds like Velma. Velma, you ruined Christmas and then made me buy you a present to apologize for it. I mean, I would have got a different route than a present, but maybe that's just me. So we unveiled the gift and it's a pair of shoes. Maybe the mum was going to smack her with them after all. Just imagine the change in history if Velma had actually been punished as a child. She could have grown up to be a normal human being and... This show never would have needed to have been made. But a mum starts getting upset. You've grown up so much. I've missed so many years of your life. Which I still would have thought was a positive, but apparently, no. And she starts losing her memories because of the anxiety. Quick, make her feel good by telling her she's more attractive than her sister. I mean, that might be true, but unless you tell me that her sister lives in the sewers, I'm not going to take your word for it. Evolution's been perfecting humanity for thousands of years. It would be incredibly unlucky to roll snake eyes twice. Mom, it's okay. I may be older, but I'm still the same old Velma. He said make her happier, not top herself. Oh, don't worry, Mom. I'm still Velma. I I've forgotten everything. I'm sorry. What show am I auditioning for again? Is it most embarrassing bodies? Because right now, that would be an improvement. I I didn't offer to load the dishwasher once while you were gone. Velma's even like, I haven't changed. I'm still an insufferable cow. Do you think we could do a remake of like Mork and Mindy Kaling so she can piss off to another planet? I... <laughs> So I haven't ruined your life? No, Velma did that all on her own, believe me. With that in mind, we get a flashback of Velma's young years where she ruined her life. Just all of her titles and achievements get stripped from her because quite frankly, she deserves nothing. And she's like, yeah, bring me your report cards. That'll be good. Because that's what everyone wants when they get saved from a kidnapper. Their child's report cards. Oh yeah, please tell me how you did in PE the last two years. That'll be exciting. Now we get the side story, which is entirely pointless. And I honestly have no idea why it's in the episode at all. I do think it's one of the scriptwriter's personal hangups. Because it makes a huge part of this episode and it pointless. This is literally someone's bugbear that they've got to tell the world about. Because the brains come back into school and now they're the popular crowd. Daphne walks up to her previous friends. You tried to leave us for dead in the mines? Your popularity is officially revoked. I genuinely think this is just someone's high school story that they decided to write an episode about. Oh, the horrors of not being popular at high school. Whether you were or you won't, it was high school. Most people grow up and move on with their lives to things that actually matter. At least that's one option, because the other seems to be get hired by HBO as part of a quota and then write an entire episode about your insecurities. This is comedy gold. I can just relate to it so much. Please update your status to loser across all social platforms. Let me assure you that's funny because it's true. I never thought I'd say this, but when are you going to return to your rampant bigotry? At least I was used to that, and it wasn't you whining about your fifis in school. The series manages to get more petty as it goes on. So everyone in the school immediately drops her as a friend because a brain said so, and apparently they've done the same to Fred. I'm out for two-timing the brains. Even the girl who pretends to be a cat won't talk to me anymore. Are we sure that's a girl? This is 2023, you can't be too careful. This is actually pretty similar to how I imagine the normal Velma writer. Maybe the writers weren't the people who were made unpopular, they just watched it all from a tree. <laughs> Okay, I didn't think the scene would get worse, but it did. I can only apologize on behalf of all humans that that exists. Oh yes, and this. Girls don't decide if I'm popular. Society's obsession with looks does. As written by someone who clearly looks like the back end of a horse. So why are humans obsessed with good looks? Is it down to good DNA, which then actually improves the human race going on to the future via their children, or... I don't know, is it just superficial and meaningless? One of the issues with assuming everything is a social construct is the complete separation from actual reality that happens. You begin to think that nature is your enemy for some reason. Cut to Norville and he's engaged in a fencing tournament. Velma starts interrupting him because she thinks her life matters and anyone cares about it. Use a real sword, mate, it'll solve all your problems, but unfortunately, no, we've got next episode to look forward to as well. This is for the state championship! It's not the entertainment at a virgin convention? No, because if it was, they would have put an attractive woman on screen. Also, let's not forget to the people in this school that meant to be 15. So they all should be. But she keeps whining at him that he needs to change a report card so that a mum can be happy that she's got good grades, even though Valmer is thick as pig excrement, which then distracts him enough that he loses the championship. Norville, are you going to fetch that sword yet or no? Okay, he's, you're, you're still too patient, right? Norville lost a million dollar prize, by the way. Back to the writer's insecurities and Daphne can't find a table to sit at. She can't sit with the girls, so she tries to manipulate the guys. What? Watch this. Hi, boys. Mind if I... <gasps> I call it the writer's insecurities because that would never happen. Oh, no. An attractive woman trying to talk to me. Please go away. And whoever did write this scene, if that did happen to you, then you're just not as hot as you think you are. <laughs> Probably look like Velma. But then everyone rejects her at their table and she's left to sit by the rubbish. Alongside Fred, who continue in his constant and unrelenting humiliation 
has now been attacked by garbage bees, that well-known common animal that we're all aware of. There are actually animals that are obsessed with trash, so I don't even know why we went for this. Daphne, stop! My only hope is to be accepted as their queen. Yeah, so even Fred doesn't want Daphne sitting by him, although the girls at the back have another plan. Incoming, losers! <laughs> yeah, you see? The reason why that's funny is because it's happening to Fred. No, that's literally the joke. Haha, <laughs> look at him, he's rich, and we can't stand him because we're bigger. All of Valber is basically just a manifesto, and nothing good ever comes from writing a manifesto. But it really is where they write something down and go, oh, this will be funny, everyone will love this, and it turns out, no, no, it's just you. No, it's just you and your sick and twisted remains of whatever used to be your morality. But Norval fakes a report card, sees what she thinks is the killer inside her house. It's all your fault because you took too long to get me my new report card. Can you understand why Norval still talks to her? Because I can't. Do you remember episode one where they said that Velma was her story told from her perspective? This is the story after being run through Velma's own bias. This is the best possible interpretation of her behavior. How she actually acted was worse. But it turns out to just be a distraught mom looking after her own baby. Oh, the horror. But she gets caught by Valma's parents. Wait, you lived here? Amon, did you have an affair? No, no, he didn't have an affair. You left the family because Velma was so insufferable, we learned that in episode two. But as I said at the start of the episode, they just want to humiliate the father in this. So despite the fact that the mother ran away and ditched the family for some reason, it's all the father's fault. Can't imagine why. While I was- Wait, what happened to me again? You ditched the family and your own daughter because she was so insufferable she scared you away. This has already been established in the story. I don't know why we have to keep repeating lies about it. Mom, it's okay. Dad, uh, didn't have an affair in a baby. He didn't have an affair. I don't know why you're presenting it as if you're lying about it. I split up with you two years ago. Why are you having an affair? <laughs> Don't you understand? Just because I leave you doesn't mean that you can get with somebody else. You're supposed to stay there and whine about me for the rest of your life in misery. <laughs> then whose baby is that? The baby is mine. No one's going to impregnate you, Valma. That's unbelievable. If you're gonna lie, at least base it in reality at some point. Yours? What? Who's the father? Say it was a turkey baster. It's the only thing that's gonna make any sense. Unfortunately, the turkey baster couldn't handle the horror afterwards and was found in the rubbish bin of its own accord. Only acceptable answer is you sat on a public toilet seat, which we've talked about. The only way that's gonna happen off a public toilet seat is if a man is also sitting on the toilet seat. Who would have thought that the mom leaving for two years would have been the best thing to ever happen to Velma? It's a tale as old as time, really. The Archangel Gabriel appeared before Velma. That actually would be a more believable story than someone getting drunk enough to be willing to turn Velma up against a wall. Norville. <laughs> the father is Norville. Don't worry, mom. That is the reaction of the entire audience as well. <sighs> I mean, I would do that, but my chair's got a back on it. Locked in the upright position and strapped in so I can't escape until I get the video done. That's how I watch these episodes. Why would you tell your mom the baby's yours? She's already had an unwanted baby in her life. Okay, but hear me out. If they're both unwanted, why don't we get them together and make them fight each other in gladiatorial combat until only one can escape? And then make sure it's not Velma. Look, if Milf Manor can get TV series funding, I'm sure that idea can. Anything's better than learning your husband cheated on you. He didn't cheat on her at all. She left the family because you were insufferable and scared off your own mom. For the first time in her life, it turned out that Velma's mom actually had standards and realized she'd been sickened by the very thing that she's created. Like the story of Frankenstein all over again, except she created an even more horrible monster. But her mom didn't faint because she learned Velma was a degenerate. She's always been a degenerate. No, she's had another huge memory. She was in the basement of Fred's house looking for the laboratory. She discovered the lab entrance, but couldn't get through the brick wall, so found a secret entrance instead. Except while going down it, something horrific happened, and no, it wasn't being reminded you'd given birth to Velma. She got attacked by a bat, and rather than turning into Batman, I tore its wings off with my teeth as a warning to the other bats. She became Ozzy Osbourne instead, which fits into the story rather well, because in Velma, people are getting their brains removed, while Ozzy Osbourne removed his own. He just did it chemically, over decades rather than with a knife. You had a memory, which means I'm right. You like that I had a baby and that Norville's the father. It doesn't mean she liked it. It just means that it's so unrealistic she hasn't yet formed an opinion about it. I don't like that you had a baby. Based economy. It's better than him having cheated on me. He couldn't have cheated on you when you left him. I voluntarily ran away from the family, but I expect him to live in misery for the rest of his life. Serral, 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 serral. Oh. 2023. Norval does seem like a great father. Theodore Roosevelt, who massacred indigenous people in the name of imperialism. What? Now, presumably, understandably, I'm not exactly up on that history, but that is quite the claim. And I thought, if I was brave and stunning, where would I get my information from? And that's how I ended up on Wikipedia. And it was at that point which I found the problem. Either way, Valma's now gonna have to look after the baby, so it'll be interesting to see how long that survives. 
Marvel? What's that, about four seconds? Or is this showing us how Velma was treated as a baby as well? Because that would make a lot of sense. Well, there is a lot of opportunity for fugly babies these days. Amanda could grow up to be a meme. Or a voice actress. Get her own animated series on HBO Max. Start whining about all the problems that she's created in her own life and just the responsibility of everybody else in the world. Oh, I can see it now. In fact, it feels like I've been watching it for a month already. It's just, there's nothing better than having a daughter. We need to be a bit more specific about that, don't we? At least limit it down to the quality of daughters. Some of them include Velma. I would rather have Fred as a child than Velma. You never stopped looking for me. I'm only alive because of you. That's not true at all. Velma didn't even find you. You found Velma. She was in a locked cell, which you weren't in. And when she was in trouble, you ran in from outside and saved her. If anything, you had the run of the entire complex and could have left whenever you wanted. You even knew where a van was with keys to escape and just decided not to. How did you get that van down the well, by the way? Are we ever going to get an answer to that? Just make sure Amanda doesn't fall off the bed the way you always did at that age. What? Okay, Valma repeatedly smashing her face into the ground as a baby explains a lot of things, let's be honest. This whole series has just come into focus now. <laughs> but the baby wakes up and scares Valma. Luckily, Norval springs into the room and saves her because, let's face it, it's not that difficult. Like I said, this entire story is told from Velma's perspective, so I can only assume in reality she's just there drooling onto the floor. Repeatedly smashing your face into the ground will do that to you. That's why she thinks all of this is really difficult, and everyone else is a genius compared to her. Velma, she's hungry. She's not hungry. When I showed her my boobs, she fainted. I'm not surprised. I'd probably do the same thing. That's basically one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. If it's anything like your sparkling personality, it's probably rotting and covered in maggots. Then Daphne comes by, finds out about Velma and Norval, and gets inspired with her own idea. She wants to fake a relationship with Fred, but it's been more than 30 seconds, and so we've got to humiliate him again. I was practicing getting swirlied, and I must have passed out. Yep, start the timer. Probably another 30 seconds before we get something like that again. The best part of all these jokes are just how they're spread out evenly. So Daphne and Fred start faking a relationship. She gets out of his limo at school. I'm sure all of this isn't just an excuse to get in his limo, no. She's definitely more concerned about popularity in Velma. I could be a multi-millionaire or data too. It's such a complicated decision. And for some reason, these guys are the ones which are more obsessed by the relationship drama, because that's accurate. Oh, I know there's social pariahs right now, but this is huge. That scene has never happened at any place on Earth at any time. We have proof of this. It's called reality television. You only have to look at the demographics of the viewers to find out that men don't care about that drama, except for Milf Manor, which seems to just be people making videos and Californians. Daphne continues a relationship drama to try and become popular. Obviously, that means humiliating Fred again. It has been more than 30 seconds. Oh, he's crying because he got hit by a little girl. And she's so upset because Fred's such a horrible man. They go out as a couple onto the grass, and everyone decides to follow him out there, giving up the tables, which means that the brains lose their power. Which is kind of what you'd expect in Velma, because not many people involved with it have much brain power anyway. We get Velma's mom checking in on a baby, who then has a flashback. Oh, I remember walking into the lab and seeing the welding mask guy. Ah! That's what I said. Velma, I'm sorry, but this video of your talent show isn't making me happy. Don't worry, no video of Velma's ever made anyone happy. At this point, I only watch Velma to remind myself that no matter how bad things get, I could always be Velma. After that, I just cheer right up and carry on. <laughs> Velma tries to get Norville to publish a fake newspaper article about her. All right, calm down, Eliza. This headline could be the difference between making my mom happy and the serial killer taking a million more girls. I said calm down, Eliza, leave it alone. After that, Velma goes into Norville's dad's office and finds a welding mask. And at least they decided to do this with a character who I could genuinely believe they wanted to be the serial killer. Cut to Norville's house and his family, and the police are raiding it because they now think that he's the killer. It turns out that Velma's gone to him and completely grasped him up for absolutely no reason whatsoever. She just found a welding mask. That's literally the only evidence that she had, and she tried to destroy his house. When it turns out, he's only using a mask to forge a sword for Norville. And I have to say, I think he's done great work. That is the perfect imitation of a prop from Rings of Power. And when I said destroy his house, I really meant it, as a tank drives through the front wall. I'm already one conversation about affirmative action away from killing you. Mindy's decided to get spicy for a bit. I'm just saying, if white people are now the minorities on campus... <laughs> <laughs> I do like the insinuation, though. Don't you understand? That's my superpower. You can't take that away from me. Like I said, it's what happens when all of your opinions are based on power dynamics rather than principle. That's why it's largely pointless to point out hypocrisy, because it was never about the principle in the first place. But Fred's mom's like Daphne. You seem to actually be really good at making things popular. Do you have any ideas for our business? But in the background, they're getting spied on by Fred's father, who is not pleased. Presumably, it's because he wants Fred to inherit the business and not 
whatever woman that his wife's speaking to. And let's face it, it's been most likely that he's been the serial killer from the start, because look at him. And they've just given him the motive to if his wife has been going around talking to all these people, trying to replace Fred. And this guy is not pleased. I put you above everything in my life. I don't understand why you put her above anything in your life. I would consider practicing telekinesis on my mouse to be more important than spending a, even a second in Velma's company. And I haven't mastered it, but if Velma gets a season two, I think I'm gonna give it a good try. I don't care! You're a bad friend, and you look terrible in orange. To be fair, that statement also works if you move in orange. You're a bad friend, and you look terrible. I don't know, I think it just needs something extra, because it's, it's not harsh enough. An elf is a luminous spirit, and a dwarf is a hairy oaf. Are you calling Velma a dwarf? You're a bad friend, and you look terrible, you hairy oaf. Does vastly improve the previous lines, actually. But with that, Norville falls out with Velma again, as he's done in so many episodes this series, and says, We're not friends anymore. <laughs> Velma realizes that the baby isn't in the pram, as it's decided to roll down the road. Let's face it, if the only way I could get away from Velma is playing in traffic, I'd do that as well. And I mean, oh no, it definitely goes in traffic. It's so desperate to escape the abomination, just rolls through main roads and everything, causes crashes everywhere, until it rolls into a museum of soft and harmless things, which turns Velma into an incredible thumbnail. Meanwhile, Fred and Daphne are at the dance together. The brains don't believe that they're together, so ask them to prove it. Ask them to prove it as if that's going to be a challenge. When they dating at the start of the series, it's not like they haven't done this before. Luckily, this time it disgusts Valma, which is always a positive. But at that moment, her parents turn up, and that means the mother finds out that the baby isn't Valma's. But luckily, the timer runs out, and her mother has put two and two together anyway. You did have an affair, Amon, while I was kidnapped. You didn't have an affair. You left him because you couldn't stand your daughter and ran away. The thing is, though, now we've established that man bad, it allows us to come to another realization. I do remember who the serial killer is. Maybe I'm relieved to finally be freed from my sexually unfulfilling marriage. If it's unfulfilling, have you considered doing it more often? Put some effort in yourself rather than acting like the food at the aforementioned sushi restaurant. What I'm saying is, have you ever just considered that it might have been your fault? No, no, what am I thinking? That can't be true, can it, Mindy. I mean Velma. I mean Velma's mom. But just as she's about to announce who the serial killer is. It's, it's, it's. Oh no, I never saw that coming. Please, won't someone please tune in for the finale? <laughs> now a better YouTuber than me may go, and for that, you're gonna have to watch the next video tomorrow. And I have to say, I kind of have to do that because I've not seen the next episode yet. But I did watch about the first 20 seconds of it, and she says it's her. Then Velma goes, but it can't be her! So I honestly have no idea and can't actually tell you because I don't know. What I will say is, given the rest of the series, it's not going to be Velma's mom, is it? There's reasons why I think it's going to be Fred's dad, or somebody that looks just like Fred's dad. And I think anyone that has made it this far in the Velma Review series, there's no way you can sit through this much of the filth without realizing what this show is trying to do. And so for that reason, if you've made it this far, Put your guesses as to who is the serial killer down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. The finale. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you next one. Bye-bye. Child creeping. Ah! Ah!